Okay, first thing to do is pull up the battery module. Okay, next you want to pull off the memory modules. Um, just make sure you use the appropriate screwdriver. I'm using a dual size one. It's the biggest one, but just be careful not to use a small one because the small one will do some damage to the screws. So just ensure that you're using the appropriate one. Okay, when handling memory, um, always wear an anti-static wrist trap. So don't cause any damage to the modules themselves. You clip the little latches on the side and that should just come off and pop out. Okay, next step is um, remove the wireless LAN module. Um, you've got two screws here, so just undo them. Then you get these little antenna things. Um, they should just pop off. Now, this should just be able to slot out. Okay, next is your hard drive. So you want to take these three screws off. That's the cover for the hard drive. Also, you need to be documenting where all these screws are coming from. Very important you do this. And if you don't, you're going to have a very hard time trying to find out the right screws with the right hole. So just get, us, get some sticky notes, a piece of paper, write down the actual component, and put the screws on that note, the piece of paper. That should just slide out. And then the hard drive here, you've got two screws there, so you take them two screws off. Um, all these screws are the same, so you can group them together, that's fine. And that should slide out. Next is your optical drive. So this is really easy. All you do is you just tap the back of the optical drive very slowly and that should just pop out. Alright, so the next thing is take your keyboard off. Um, I want you guys to be very careful when you're pulling a keyboard on. I assumed that this keyboard panel, I'll show you the actual panel that sits in between the keys was supposed to come off but no that's meant to stay on your keyboard so whatever you do do not pull this off be very careful but when you when you're pulling pushing these notches the latches sorry where these notches are above the escape key F5 F9 print screen and end the latches need very little force so don't apply any force when you're doing this otherwise you will break things that's what I did I was too lazy to read the manual so um, just be careful um, all you got to do I'll show you the, right, the correct way to do it um, I'm actually like to fix that I would have to buy a new keyboard because the panel is actually embedded into the keyboard itself and I, and I just snapped the actual holes off off the keyboard so you know it, it sits in there but not flush there's once you get that first latch up it's easy so all you do is you just do the same thing with the other latches undo them it requires very little force so you don't force it and that's it that's, that's basically it alright so then you just have to take the ribbon cable off the circuit board for the keyboard um, just be careful with your clip that you have to unclip just push it very gently just one on both sides little black connector 
slightly push it with a screwdriver and then the ribbon cable should just slide out. Alright, so next um, you're going to have to disconnect these cables. Um, you've got your hot key cable here for these baddies and then you've got your touchpad cable, your power cable and your, uh, what's that, it's your speaker cable. So you have to undo them. Be very careful with these little connectors because they're easy to break. So you just gently put a little screwdriver, sort of like go from side by side. And you just be careful with the black connectors. And the same before with the keyboard connector. You, just, you don't want to break one of them. And uh, do that with your touchpad cable. Pull that out. And the hot key cable. Okay. Also, another good idea is just to um, close these little black connectors just in case something grabs onto them when you're working on the computer. So just make sure they're all closed. And close your keyboard on as well. Already done that. Alright, next step is just to take the four screws off. You've got one there, one there, one there, and one there. Okay, the next step is you have to take the top case off from the bottom case. Um, I, I just put a rag over a screwdriver and done it. Um, it's probably best if you've got something plastic that can fit in between the case, the top case and the bottom case. Um, I've already done this, so this is going to come off with these. Um, for you, it won't if this is the first time you're taking it off. Um, so just be very careful when you're doing it. Okay, the next step is to pull your LCD display off. Um, start by reeling these wireless antennas out from underneath the motherboard um, and then just get some tweezers and pull this carefully pull this clip out um, then disconnect and just use your fingers And disconnect your video connector. Use the flap to lift it up. And um, unscrew the two screws there and two screws here. Okay, so screws are off. Just be very careful at the moment because you don't want to drop your. LCD display. Um, you might have to take the tape off the chassis to free some wires. And now your display is off. So then you take off this left saddle. Um, your next step is to undo these two screws here. In the manual it says there's another screw there, but that's because that screw is on the hard drive connector, which we're connecting, which ASUS don't include a screw for, so you'll have to chase up a screw yourself. So just take off these two screws. And then undo the connectors. You've got your USB 3, USB connector there, and your Bluetooth connector. Undo them. Let's try, you just use your fingers. You can cause a damage to the clips if you use a screwdriver. Be 
bit more awkward, but saves the clips. And that's it. Now the motherboard by right should be able to come out. So now you get your motherboard off, you have to connect to your SATA connector that you ordered on there. Um, you got a little connector here that clips into the motherboard, and then you got these two screws here. Um, I'm going to take Memnox advice from the N71 JQ Onus Lounge. I recommend using the screws underneath the battery. Um, that was when you were taking off all the screws from the back of the laptop. So just you can use two of them screws for now um, and you'll need another screw here um, I believe that's going to be a M2 by 6.5 millimeter I measured that against the other screw off the other connector so this is where it connects to like that and then you get two, the two screws that go underneath the battery screw them in. After you've screwed the connector onto your motherboard, just slot your motherboard back in. You'll have to pull these cables up so you can slot in the connector and pretty much just connect everything back up the same way as you've taken it off. And that's pretty much it. Once you've assembled your laptop back together, um, you install your hard drives into their caddies. Um, and of course, the SUS didn't include the screws for the caddies, so um, I had to use two of the screws on the primary drive on this drive. Um, so there's two vacant screws there and two vacant screws there. So I'm going to have to chase up four screws. And if you're wondering what type of screw they are, they are two, I think they're 2.5 millimeter by 2 mil. But don't quote me on that. Um, it's just a very stubby screw. And uh, pretty much that's about it. You know, um, also, you'll need to get another two screws here as well. Um, luckily, I had two screws that fit in these holes. Um, so, yeah, that, that's basically it. Um, and thank you for watching the video.